All right, welcome back to Morning Live. And there's something interesting coming up in this country. And uh, uh, the uh, ministers of faith, uh, uh, let me say they are in trouble of some sort. Because now, uh, before you open a church, you must have a certificate of good conduct. You must have that uh, a degree in theology. And uh, it seems like the government is just trying to gag these guys because of the reason happenings. You know, you won't mention names, but they've been acting so weird. And the office of the attorney general sent some proposals to LSK and trust me it is a very um, kind of a mind-boggling um, uh, measures that have to make sure the churches are streamlined. In studio I'm joined by a lawyer that is um, Okili um, David Ohenga who will be telling us more about these happenings and we saw this coming because at the end of the day it's all about protecting the uh, condo. <laughs> the condo, the guys who go to church are being protected by the law. Now good morning by David. Good morning, yeah um, I'll start with the first one. Quickly, before I even go to the nitty gritties. Yes. Um, licensing of ministers of faith. Yes. Now, um, the current requirements, we have registration of the church, and the annual returns are up to date, and the marriage solemnization is one of the objectives of the church. Now, there's an amendment coming up where licenses, but the ministers of faith will be renewed after every five years. A minister of faith applying for a license to appear in person or send a church representative. A minister of faith applying for a license shall be required to submit so many things just to make sure he or she is given a license. I thought it's a calling. What's happening? <laughs> I, Nick, I, I think we, we live in the reality right now. People have turned this thing over their head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's it's a lot of commercialized. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think what the government is trying to do is to streamline some of these things. And if you realize those proposals actually uh, arise from what the Christians are proposing, you know, in terms of what they believe yeah. should be the right thing to be done yeah. as it relates to marriages and the people officiate those marriages. Mm -hmm. And, and and to me, I think it is right. It's about time we put some you know measures to protect okay. what you call Kodo, yeah. you know, from some of these people <laughs> Absolutely. who don't necessarily mean well, you know. Yeah. And and I think the raft of of amendments that are being proposed hmm. are actually good. It is important that you believe in the person who's officiating your <laughs> range. You believe in their conduct. You believe in what okay. they're putting forth. Okay. And, and, uh, it is. It is. Good. But but we've reached a point where a pastor has to provide a certificate of good conduct to open a church. <laughs> I mean, even you, uh, it is even getting a job nowadays in some I institutions. Know, but look, 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 it at, is important. look at the uh, Christian angle and the belief angle and the faith angle. It's just um, kind of confusing also because I'm a pastor. I should uh, be kind of immune to so many things because I have this faith. I'm pure. I'm pure. Let me say that. But now, guys, I needed to provide um, a certificate of good conduct. Yes, Nick. I think we live in the reality right okay, now. Okay. We see what is happening okay. across here. Wow. Every morning there's a church being opened. Every yeah. morning there's someone who's mm -hmm. becoming a pastor yeah. for their own motives, some mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And I think it is important that you know those okay. people will put in check. All right. Yeah. Now, um, still, when you continue with this thing, um, uh, previously, before a minister of faith ordains a marriage, uh, his license was permanent. Yes. It was non renewable. But re this time around, we're finding uh, it will be renewed, actually. After, after a period of time, years, yes. after five years. Yes. W do you think also the government is trying to cash in from them, or what do you think about now the whole situation? I don't think it is being commercialized. I think it also gives the government or in the institutions that manages uh, marriages okay. an opportunity to vet and okay. revet the people who mm -hmm. conduct those marriages on behalf of the government. Okay. So I have uh, there is no problem with that mm -hmm. in my view. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Now um, <clears throat> you know the situation in weddings where uh, the pastor and I'm kind of saying, if anyone has an objection why this marriage should not go on, uh, please um, just uh, come forward and tell us the reason why. And then it's so there's a silent, tense moment whereby now you don't know who might just uh, kind of come from nowhere to spoil your, your day. But now, this time around, eh, um, there are legal recommendations to this, where the church has to, uh, it's been happening, yes, but the church has to um, uh, make a written notice of intention to marry at a place of worship. Now, that's the amendment, the requirement. Previously, both parties uh, visit the registrar's office to place a 21 days written notice intention to marry and, of course, pay 600 shillings. But this time round, the church has to, the licensed minister, 
he has to actually display the notice in a visible public place within the place of worship for 10 to 1 days. So that, does this mean maybe that clause in church where they say if anyone has a problem should come forward is now going away? No, no, it's not going away. Mm -hmm. It's going to be there because actually that is like the final uh, notice to the public. Okay. Uh, what has been happening, the church, you know, if, if some of these churches when you go to on Sundays, mm -hmm. they make those announcements. Yes, yes, that so every, so, Sunday, so, every Sunday. Every yeah. Sunday intends to get married to so mm -hmm. and so and if you have any issue you can come up yeah. but now what the the proposal uh, the proposed amendment seeks to do mm -hmm. is to that you have a standard notice okay. put on a notice board or something like that it never, used to, happen. The it never used to happen yeah so over and above probably making those announcements on sundays <laughs> you have a notice board where all those <laughs> intending <laughs> to get married are posted Ooh. and actually it even goes further and mm -hmm. says that they will the the, the office of the attorney general okay. will propose the format wow of how that notice will look like i, I hope it don't reach the billboards <laughs> <laughs> so probably they'll put photos i don't know but uh, wow. yeah, okay yeah, okay yeah. so now uh, looking at even um the introduction of even solemnizing um a marriage without clearance from the registrar now um it's clear that even the marriage certificate, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very legal document here. Yes. Now, um, the registrar now is kind of very strict that you cannot solemnize these two people to be one without the notification. Exactly. What is really happening? What's really it's happening? It's just streamlining the institution. Okay. Of, uh, there have been a lot of fraudulent marriages around this place. <laughs> and I think probably that's what they're no, easy is When you say fraudulent marriages... Nick, we, if you interact with some of these people who work in those registries, mm -hmm. the, the, there are things that happen. You know, people just get married for purposes of getting visas okay. and for purposes of probably just aligning themselves to okay. acquire wealth. Okay. No, so I think it is, uh, it is important that we, and, and the way Kenya being what it is right now in okay. terms of what our beliefs are, mm -hmm. in the institution of marriage, I think it is important that some of these procedures are aligned to what uh, our beliefs are okay. 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 So that if you are to conduct a marriage, mm -hmm. you, you have to be taken through a process, mm -hmm. and actually that process has to be, for lack of a better word, foolproof. Okay. And uh, you, you, once you go through that, then you can be allowed to, to you know, to get married yeah. and all that. So that clearance to me is very important. Mm -hmm. It actually, to, to put it in perspective, the the those clearances have been there. Okay. But it's only that they have not been. Put in legislated, public? yeah, yeah okay. you know, in, in this way, which okay. they are, which they are being sought to be put okay. in, in the act. Okay, but they have been there. The AG has always been doing that. They've been clearing people for that. Okay, and and, uh, and I think it is important. It gets some backing. All in right. The, okay. Uh, now you remember there was a law that came up. I don't know if it's a law or a proposal that um, you stay with any woman for six months, she automatically uh, becomes your wife. Now, oh. um, so many people are worried about that. Because uh, the cash will come, we stay scenarios are so many in this country, all over the world actually. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the issue of six months, she automatically becomes your wife. Now, which document can you provide that six months you've been together? Is yeah. it even like a, a kind of practice? No, that is a common law practice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not uh, legislated anywhere or yeah. written somewhere that that's supposed to be. But the courts have over time okay. interpreted the circumstances. I mean, if, if you live with someone for over six months, the presumption is that you are married. Presumption? It is, is there any it document is, you need to provide? What people do nowadays is they swear affidavits. Okay. Yeah, and, and they say, you know, we are married under customary law or whatever it is. But okay. it doesn't necessarily mean that the government will produce document. Okay. But secondly, what now... Actually, the previous proposals that were given by the Attorney General, which actually were passed into law, mm -hmm. the once you the customary marriages, mm -hmm. what considered to be customary marriages now, have to be registered. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Have, there's a procedure you go through mm -hmm. at the office of the Attorney General, then they have registered and you are given a certificate. Okay. But the 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 six months thing that you're talking about mm -hmm. for a very long time okay. has just been based on presumption. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, back to the ministers of faith. Uh, still, still, uh, there's a lot coming from their end because now um, the attorney general still wants, okay, but let's say the government still wants these people to go through so much kind of um, a payments. You know, they have to pay so much. And also, they have fines when they fail to do something. Yeah. Wow. It's, why do you think these guys are being pushed to the world? Reality, Nick. It's just the way society has transformed itself to mm -hmm. be. <coughs> People are taking advantage of certain mm -hmm. loopholes, okay. and they're making it. You know, they are cashing out on them. Mm 
-hmm. and it's about time some of these things we streamlined them. Okay. It's just the reality where we have been. Okay. The institution of marriage in society is mm -hmm. the most basic okay. thing that holds the fabric of society together. Mm -hmm. So the, mm -hmm. the more we protect it, the better for, okay. for, for all of us. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now, um, uh, the thematic area of uh, solemnization of marriage, uh, the current requirement was um, uh, Section 21 of the Act actually provides that the person officiating the marriage ceremony shall sign a marriage certificate. It happens, actually, um, and cause it to be signed by the parties, by the, by the witness to the marriage. Now, the proposed one, expansion of meaning of who can be a witness so as to meet requirements under Christian marriage. What does it mean? It basically means that the church now can determine or define who the witness is. Nowadays, what people do, you get your best friend. Yeah. Regardless of what he believes in, or whether he even believes in the institution of marriage, and you make them a witness. Yeah, yeah. But now that allows the, the church, and yeah. the, probably under the Christian marriages, mm -hmm. to define who a witness will be. They'll say probably someone who has been in marriage for three or four years. Okay, okay. Someone who's, you know, high moral yeah. standing or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically what. So you can just be a best man. If you're you a can man. just be a best man for the sake of being a best man. You have the wow. criteria which wow. you have to wow. meet. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I understand there's so much happening right now. Now, um, before we even go to the divorce, because now this is a very broad topic. As you're speaking, some people are divorcing right now. Some are actually hooking up. But looking at the whole scenario, we, we uh, it's boiling down to a, a situation whereby it's being now scrutinized. Yes. There's so much scrutinization of this sector because now, is it a matter of maybe um, there's so many divorce cases in the courts? And you as a lawyer, I'm very sure you've actually met such cases. How is it so far on the ground? Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> let's say, people disgruntled in marriages and they have decided to part ways. But an of interesting thing is that people don't necessarily decide to go through the divorce process in court. You would say 70% of the marriages that have gone, you know, have, have split. People actually separated, but they have not gone through the process in court. Wow. They have moved out, they are living in different houses, they have gone on with their lives, and that's it. They don't go through the court process. Very few, I'd say maybe 20-30% are the ones who go to court. Okay. To have the but they, official, but they say know, it takes so much time, even a maximum of three yeah, it, years. It, it takes so much time, and uh, I bet for good reasons. Like I said again, mm -hmm. Kenya being what it is in terms of our beliefs mm -hmm. and uh, moral alignment, you know, Christianity and religion yeah. and yeah. all that. That's why probably it's it, it. That's why it takes that long. Yeah. But people, even because of that period that it takes, that's why people even decide not to even go through it. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just decide, you know what? This is not working. I'm out. And they leave it at that. What are the implications with that? Now? There are a lot of implications in terms of maybe uh, going forward, you know, uh, in terms of property yeah. uh, sharing, if yeah. there was anything that was acquired mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Uh, even the children, you know, sometimes yeah. they also get confused on what is really happening. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot of uh, things around it. Okay. But, but like I said again, divorce as it is right now is a topic that most of the people wouldn't rather go into. Yeah. They would rather just want to separate. Okay. Do, 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 do you think, I understand this kind of, uh, just a dream, a pipe dream um, scenario where, do you think maybe even the Attorney General will come up, up maybe some laws to kind of govern marriages? Because when you say, uh, you're going to be married <laughs> married for one year, then you renew your contract. Are you seeing I such things I happening? I don't, I don't see that happening. Okay. Yeah, because all these things, Nick, I'll tell you, like I, I keep on emphasizing, Kenya, we we. Uh, the way we are shaped as a country, we believe in religion, we yeah. believe in, in uh, some sort of code of conduct okay. uh, yeah. based on Christianity, mm -hmm. is Islamic law, and, yeah. and any other religion that is outside there. Mm -hmm. And those don't support those type of arrangements. Okay. So I don't see that coming. Okay. Probably, uh, I don't know, but I don't see it coming. All right. So we're taking a short break now. We'll be dwelling on a divorce of Christian marriage when you come back because now there's something very interesting with that. There's a legal recommendation of uh, introdu introduction of actually three years time limit before a divorce can be filed wow three years before a divorce can be filed so you wed and then after two years you want to divorce no three years after divorce can be filed so all that coming to you after a short break
Okay, welcome back to Morning Live. Now you want to dwell on divorce over Christian marriage. And as I told you earlier, there's something very interesting here where introduction of a three years time limit before a divorce can be filed. And also parties seeking divorce to provide evidence of failed mediation process before filing for a divorce. And of course, now as far as the churches are concerned, recognition of conciliatory bodies established under religious organizations. Now, I mentioned the first one where three years needed mm -hmm. before you got, of course, you can get a divorce. But it's, it's still very um, confusing because now people wed next week after honeymoon, boom, they're out. They're out, yes. Yeah. Actually, th that provision has been there in law. Uh, but what has been happening is that uh, depending on the circumstances, okay. there are some special circumstances mm -hmm. where you can obtain divorce you know, without, uh, b before reaching the three-year oh, special limit, circumstances, special circumstances okay. which require some sort of proof to be produced and all that. But that requirement that you have to stay in a marriage for at least a minimum of three years before you file for divorce has been there. Uh, the new introduction, uh, the new introduction of yeah. uh, now mediation process. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's that's another one. Uh, that's, Big that's, one. That's where I think people will have a lot of issues with because sometimes, you know, these these are issues to do with two people. So right. if you're going to have a mediator, which is a good thing probably as a starter, to see if there's can if if there's any form of reconciliation that can be reached, but to now use that as proof in court that actually these people have failed to to agree in a mediation process yeah, yeah. and that should form part of the basis why they should be separated or divorced and yet in court again mm -hmm. you know you have to go through that process of yeah. you have to adduce evidence you mm -hmm. have to be questioned on yes. whatever you have produced yeah. uh, to me in my view i think is a duplication of of the whole process mm -hmm. and it is unnecessary okay yeah All so right. i would rather people <coughs> just engage in a mediation process if it fails then they can move to court and then now let the court make a determination without necessarily relying on what the mediation okay. process has Okay. Produced. Now also the churches need to come back, come come up with a committee. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What is that? Man? Yeah. I I think that's what the the the, the whole idea of making mediation okay. a process, mm -hmm. you know, of of uh, making people divorce okay. is all about. Mm -hmm. they, they want to give people a chance, you know, where you got married from. <laughs> go back there first, okay. raise your issues there and okay. say the reason why I can't live with If it fails so, now? If it fails now, then you can move to court for nullification. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. Now, even looking at current society, um, we have more divorce cases than marriage uh, going going down. True, true. Now, um, from a legal perspective, um, you're an experienced lawyer. Um, you've faced these things. At least in your daily kind of operations, you faced at least a divorce, some issues. So many things are happening right now. Um, do do you think it's 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 right to say that um, uh, what what church is on? No, I mean, I think the people divorcing are less than the ones who are getting married. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, because of the way you know it is considered to be a stage in life okay you know getting married so mm -hmm. people would go for that mm -hmm. you know as, as soon as they can mm -hmm. and, and when it comes to getting out i think they, they make a determination for themselves okay. but in terms of mm -hmm. getting married i think people are getting married more than, than okay. people are divorcing. i have a text here from jemima who says uh, what if i get pregnant before my wedding uh, well this is complicated what if I get pregnant before my wedding and we can't agree on the wedding because I want to raise the child first? Well, I think this is uh, something they can discuss. Yeah, that, that is a personal something thing. Discuss, but that's personal. Yeah. All right. Another one, of course, you didn't mention your name. Um, how will I be able to trust a man I've just been with for three months and he's proposing a customary mar marriage? And is there a legal, um, maybe, is there a legal way I can escape from this now? Before you get married, there's always all the avenues of escaping that kind of arrangement. <laughs> but when you get after that, that's when now there's a you, know, okay. you are tied bound to a certain okay. set of rules. Okay. So I think okay. that, that's still a personal decision. Here okay. Yeah. Now Fort Knox, Fort Knox, he asks, um, uh, uh, the issue of uh, staying with a woman for six months and she automatically becomes your wife or vice versa, does it still apply? Yes, it does. Okay. It is still there. Uh, one thing that people need to understand, it arises from a presumption. Mm -hmm. That presumption, if the, in fact, one of the case laws we used to read when we were in school studying family law, we, mm -hmm. the, the test that is applied is okay. the people around you, okay. when they were seeing the two of you living in that setting for, for six months, 
what did they think of it? Okay. If they thought of you as being a couple or mm -hmm. married people, then the presumption is that you are married. Okay. And founded on that basis, someone can say that actually I stayed with this person for six months. Okay. The people around us believed we are married. Okay. And so we are married. All right. So, yeah. Final question. Uh, Urban Guru uh, Sami Jr. says, um, what if I've stayed with a woman for three years and I decided to kick her out? Goodness. <laughs> stayed for three years? Yes. And Will she go somewhere and maybe I think I think what 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 he's trying to to ask is yeah. is it catastrophic for after three years uh, you break up and you've been staying together will she go somewhere and just uh, make sure that she can corner you yes if she decides to do that yes she can okay because the presumption of marriage at least <laughs> has been created by you staying for that longer period okay yes all right yeah. now um presumption of marriage has been created right now we have so many come with stay cases yeah. in this country and looking at even the economic uh, background the country is not really no not so many people embracing the power of marriage the power of the union uh, some are saying and it's it's kind of just uh, it's 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 bad because now it's trying to instill some negativity to marriage now do, do, do you think even with this um the review of the 2014 act do you think now it will kind of uh, sort these issues out because now there's some strictness in all this yeah yeah i think to a certain extent it will and actually to create some sort of definity okay. in the way some of these things are looked at mm -hmm. uh, to me Probably, I'd say 60% of those proposals are okay. Okay. Some will face challenges mm -hmm. uh, for, for reasons well known to us. Okay. <laughs> but I think they're okay. And mm -hmm. the, the proposal should just pass to a certain extent. Okay. I think it okay. is important. All right. Appreciate. Now, looking at the, prop, uh, the, pro, the process of uh, all this becoming law, um, I understand you've mentioned uh, some will face challenges, uh, the rejection at some point. Now, how can they now be just be amalgamated into the law? What's the process? The process now for this to become this is actually yeah. just a proposal. So it's just a now proposal. become becoming law. How yes. are they now? What's the process? Yeah, the AG now will have to take all those amendments to Parliament, okay. and then now Parliament will, depending on actually there's been a there's continued you know discussion on on those proposals okay. for, at least to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, public is uh, the public is invited to to make their you know contributions towards those amendments. Uh, I'm sure the church will have something uh, to say about that. That's the most uh, I'm challenging waiting thing to see. Uh -huh. uh, then after that, the proposals will be taken to Parliament. Mm -hmm. Then Parliament will pass them. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you say public, because now this is not so much in the public domain right now. Not I can say maybe forty percent. The sixty are aware of what's happening. Now, <laughs> in a public involvement. It's just kind of a, a very, it's, it's a knee-jerk reaction because as you're talking about public involvement, no one knows about all this. How can they reach the public? Be what, what usually happens, the government, or let's say, for example, this time the Attorney General's office, they usually send out those proposals to what they consider to be stakeholders. So, for example, now, because the proposals affect, let's say, ministers of faith, yeah. the, 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 the proposal will be sent to the the body that governs, you know, pastors and priests yeah. and whatever, mm -hmm. they will be given that opportunity. The church also, the congregation will be given an opportunity to say something about that. Okay. Opinion groups, you know, uh, NGOs that mm -hmm. deal with matters, marriages, okay. and, and will all be given, you know, an opportunity to mm -hmm. give their views mm -hmm. on that. And that's what is considered to be public participation. Okay. If, you know, it is, you can't say that I will email these to you know, yeah. 45,000 million yeah. Kenyans, it's true, it's you know, true. so that I yeah. wait for your feedback. Mm -hmm. It's going to be impossible. But they mm -hmm. send to strategic organizations mm -hmm. which are affected by the proposals. Okay. Yeah. Evan Souma on Facebook asks, um, Hi, Nick. Um, good show having over there. Good discussion. Ask Buanawakili, uh, uh, how will I be able to escape? to escape a situation whereby I've been framed by a woman that I haven't been living with. But it's just a, a part of evidence. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of evidence. Mm -hmm. Because I'm what usually happens in law is that uh, he who alleges must prove. Yeah. So if there's an allegation that you've been living together, then yeah. she has to produce that proof that mm -hmm. you've been living together. Okay. So, and, and your role is just to rebut that. Interesting. Yeah. There's another one here from Faith Kiza. Um, I was introduced to his parents. So that's on Facebook. I was introduced to his parents, and his parents liked me. And at some point, I stayed with the parents because I was at that time I was jobless. So uh, does it mean staying with the parents? <laughs> that's a challenging one. Now she's staying with the parents, not with the guy. No, I don't think that can create a presumption. I think you, to put it bluntly, you, they just helped you. <laughs> I swear, look, they just helped you. Look, you, you, you. It's anyway, an so, Wakila has won this up. Are yeah. you confident that some of these things will be passed? 
Yes, uh, okay. I'm sure probably 60 to 70 percent of those mm. proposals will pass. Mm -hmm. uh, as to the issues to do with the divorce and probably monitoring yeah. The, yeah. The, the ministers of faith, mm -hmm. I think some people will have something have to say issue. about that. Okay. But uh, but they are good. They, they 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 are good at least in terms okay. of streamlining okay. marriages and All right. All marriages. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for coming Nick. today. I really yeah. appreciate your sentiments, and uh, it means, in fact, we need to really review all these things because by the time some questions are very sensitive here, because uh, guys are really even asking an excellent trial by uh, what if five months and a half? You know, <laughs> it's just five months and a half. Yeah, goodness, yeah, yeah. six months. Eh? It's six yeah, months. It's six months. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. coming. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll take a short break. When it comes back will be running a recording we had earlier so stay tuned to morning live because at eight your so morning will be coming up with full circle stay tuned